just what I mean You too, team, keep it clean You see my boy, he like got a made it Shout out to Graven. Team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers. And having Coach on was so nice that we had to do it twice. And this is the second edition uh, of him joining us for questions from subs. So shout out to him. Make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel, which is down below in the description. So if you want to be part of NFL questions from subs, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons. Y'all send it directly on Patreon. Directly on Patreon. And we'll answer your question in a video just like this. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I rocks with y'all. Thank you for rocking with the channel. Thank you for supporting the channel. And thank you for supporting everybody that comes on the channel. We will continue to have more and more guests. And there may be some people that you wouldn't even think of. But it's soon come. Anyway, let's get into Next it. Next question came from Terry. He said, what's up, Engraving? Hope you and the fam are doing great. And tell Pookie I said, what's up? All right, I let her know. Uh, so I was scrolling through Instagram, and I saw NFL posted a picture of Patrick Mahomes and uh, quotations of what Orlando Brown Jr. said. He said, I'm going to make sure no one in this world touches Patrick Mahomes. And I was just thinking to myself, where was this energy at when he was a left tackle with the Ravens? I remember him not being consistent at pass blocking and seeing guys like J.J. Watt, who was up there in age, killing him. Now, yeah, Orlando was a right tackle and J.J. was killing him, but... Left tackles and right tackles get the same amount of pressures when throwing the ball. The only difference is that left tackles are usually the blindside blockers. But it's cool. We'll see the Chiefs week two at M&T Bank Stadium. So hopefully how the Chiefs will be when they lose to the Ravens in week two, I'm out. <laughs> I, um, I, I did see that quote going around. And, I mean, what, what do you want him to say? You want him to come into the Chiefs to his new team that he's about to get a nice contract for probably next offseason and be like, oh, yeah, I, I might block for Patrick Mahomes. I'd, I'll try to keep him up, right? No, he's hyped. He got, he's on a new team. He's getting to play the position that he wanted to play at left tackle. So, yeah, this ain't, like, this ain't no surprise or nothing. It ain't no, like, oh, man, I hate Orlando Brown Jr. now since he said no, man. And, yeah, he did struggle a bit with the Ravens when he played left tackle, definitely a right tackle, too. But he, he did all right for himself. He held it down, and, and now he's about to see the fruits of his labor, especially when he gets that bread. So I am this it, it it's not a big deal to me. What about you, man? Yeah, the quote's not a big deal. You expect him to say that. Uh, yeah. He's going to a new team. You got to big up your teammates, and you got to keep everything positive. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, um, and one thing is I hate it when Orlando left people start to kind of talk down on his name because he, he played good for us. He played some good ball for us. Mm -hmm. He wasn't perfect, but he played some good ball. Right. The thing is, he's going to have to play a different kind of ball. And with our system, that big old body, he was leaning on people and, and whatnot. Now he's going to have to kick back 30, 40 times a game, and I don't know if that's his game. Mm. Not saying he sucks at it, but I don't – you know what I'm saying? Right. He that's he, leaning on people is different from kicking back and trying to chase a Daffy away or or Bud Dupree or TJ Watt or or JJ Watt. That's that's a different type of game. And and if if he succeeds at it, by all means, pay the man. But I don't know if he's um a, a guy that can protect like that that many times a game because unless they change their philosophy, they ain't gonna run it a lot. They're going to they put that thing in the air, and he's going to have to kick slide and protect Mahomes like he say. And 30, 40 times times 17 games, yeah, Mahomes going to get touched. <laughs> Man. I, I would love for it to be uh, a Doffy. Ah, or yeah. Oh, Hayes. yeah. Or, or, or well, Camel ain't going to catch him. Camel just shoot <laughs> the in the middle. <laughs> I would love to be one of them young guys to, to get after him and, and go get it. Next question came from my guy Swaggy Squirrel. He said, I ain't graving. Hope this catches you well. So I'm sure you've heard that Gilly Lock has a lot of rumors around his head. Stefan Gilmore from the Patriots. Um, any, and that he wants out of New England. Any possibility you think the Ravens trade for him? Nope, not at all. Not one bit. 
It'd be nice, but nope. I no. Nope. Obviously, Humphrey is a monster. In my opinion, he's top three. Juice Man is a proven veteran corner who still has a lot in the tank, but I feel like Gilmore would still have a place. Plus, overkill isn't usually a bad thing when building onto a defense. I'm not sure about his contract, though, or how it would affect our cap space, even though the cap is cap. Hey. Uh, but I just wanted to know your thoughts on the whole situation. Plus, if you think he could end up somewhere as of a dark horse landing spot. Um, dark horse landing spots uh, off the top of my head. I can't think of anybody off the top of my head who needs a corner. But Ravens, no, it's nah. Um, it'd be nice to be a nice luxury. You have like that would be like depth, depth, depth. Humphrey, Peters, Jimmy Smith, Tavon Young. Hopefully he was healthy. And Stephon Gilmore. Then you got still got Sean Wade too. You got Brandon Stevens learning. But nah, it's no. I'll let you take it away. Um, do I think it's gonna happen? No. Like you said, would it be nice? It'd be great. Because if if it did happen, I would exclusively exclusively move Jimmy to safety. I would I wouldn't no. even let him play anymore. Slot corner that he'd be that middle of the field Roman safety dude if, if that was to happen. But um his number is huge. His cap number is huge because mm -hmm. he got paid. He was one of the few people Belichick actually paid yes. in New England. So mm -hmm. you know numbers wise it would be worse than if we had gotten Julio because he Gilmore is that dude. And the fact that they got um whoever 27 is on the other side JC that helped Jackson. Gilmore out too. Yeah that helped Gilmore out too his his production mm -hmm. this year. So and they got another corner too. They got three good corners. So yeah. um, as far as a dark horse, where he would go, you got to think of somebody that's trying to go all in and get it right now. And the only team that pops in my mind that's trying to make it happen right now before they be broke again is the Rams. <laughs> That'd be but nice. You, think about it, right? you yeah, got Ramsey, Ramsey, yeah. Ramsey Aaron Donald, and um, yeah. Gilmore. Nasty. And they got they got pieces on their defense. I didn't realize how good that defense was until right there at the end. Mm. That defense is is freaking awesome. Yeah, they they got the front end with with Aaron Donald, and he makes everybody else better right. because there are plays where the guard, center, and other guard are blocking Aaron Donald. That's so your edge guys are getting one on one blocks. Then so that means you got eight people defending, so you can't you don't really have holes to to fit the ball in, and that's mainly because of I mean it's right Jalen Ramsey is good, but that's mainly because of Aaron Donald. Mm. Aaron Donald will take up the three interior guys and the back of chipping. <laughs> so that's wild, seven on, on 10 everywhere else. And they also got uh Kenny Young too. Man. Yeah, Young, yeah. Young went over there and started balling. Yeah. I and mean, um, crazy balling. The other Raven who used to play corner, Dr. Darius. I want to say Darius Williams. Darius something. I, I can't think of his last name. They, they also got the guy that was about to come to Baltimore and decided to go back, Brockers. Got Brockers. <laughs> Brockers don't suck either. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that, boy. Oh man, that was yeah, that was yeah. wild, man. That was, that was one of my two quick videos. <laughs> <laughs> that dude, man, he was in and out, man. Next question came from my boy Anthony. He said, "What's going on? Hope you and the fam are well. It's been a while since I chimed in, and I'm assuming you watched the Marlon Humphrey press conference uh, during mini camp." So how did you feel when he mentioned that Rashad Bateman sort of got the best of him on a route in practice? A rookie on a Pro Bowl corner, one of the top cornerbacks in the league at that. Um, I thought it was cool. And, of course, we've all uh, seen the clip by now um, where Rashad Bateman got him. Uh, and it was nice, but we got to remember it, it's just it's practice and it's just one clip. There could be plenty of other clips where Marlon get the best of him. But it's I, I just like it because iron sharpens iron. Them going back and forth, like Rashad Bateman as a rookie, gets to go into training camp uh, in a little while and go up against Humphrey, Jimmy Smith, Marcus Peters, Tavon Young. He gets to go against some really good corners. And this can it's only going to make him better as a wide receiver. So when he goes against other cornerbacks in the NFL, and no disrespect, depending on who they are, he might be like, oh, that's it? Hopefully, he'll be like, oh, that's it. But it just, it, it makes him better. So I, I didn't think it was a big deal that Rashad Bateman beat Marlon Humphrey in practice. It was nice, but it, again, it's just one practice play. But how do you feel about it, Coach? Um, but take your little two ways on this one. 
Okay. And because we have a, a very good defensive secondary, I want to kind of compare it to some high school stuff that I went through last year. We had basically three sophomore receivers. And in mm-hmm. our defensive secondary, we had a kid that just recently left to go to Tennessee. We still have one that's committed to South Carolina. And we got some other, you know, one just got an offer from Vanderbilt. So that's three different guys with SEC potential in that backfield. And so we as coaches were worried about how would our young receivers do during the season. But I'm, I was like, well, look, look at what they're going against every damn practice. They're going to be better by the time the season comes because they're dealing with SEC caliber guys every day. And I'm growing by – beginning of, when season first started, they couldn't get off the jam. We couldn't complete nothing in one-on-ones. But as it went along, the people they started seeing on Friday nights were not as good as the people they were seeing Monday through Thursday. And they got better, like you just said. But as far as going to the clip, I'm glad you asked that because I was going back and forth with this. If you look at that clip and you guys kind of go back and look at it, NFL guys don't practice hard. They don't have to. So I think the only real part of that where Bateman got Marlon is the release. Because if you look at if you find the free safety, it looked like they were playing some kind of uh, cover one hole where you got uh, one deep guy and one guy sitting in the middle. The free safety just looks and just kind of, you know, he, he, he walks the entire play. Then you see somebody come from the other side to fill the lower hole. So, yeah, the release was all that, but, you know, them guys don't practice hard. They, they again, With their collective bargaining thing, they they try not to get hurt, especially doing OTAs. Mm-hmm. So the release was, yeah, that was fine. It was quick. And and I'm not, you know, talking bad on Bateman. It's just yeah. it's practice. Right. It's practice. We'll, we'll see when camp starts and when preseason starts. Mm-hmm. Just don't, don't overreact to one clip because to say – Marlon is washed. I'm not going to insult nobody. I'm going to keep it, you know, <laughs> stay positive. <laughs> stay positive. <laughs> Have a blessed day, whoever said uh, Marlon is washed. <laughs> <a> wow, <while>, man. <laughs> all right, next question came from my guy, Connor. He said, hey, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the family. So here's my question. The Ravens signed Sammy Watkins, then we drafted Rashad Bateman, then we drafted Tylen Wallace, and we still have Hollywood, Duvernay, Prochet, Miles Boykin as well, and we still have Benjamin Victor and Deion Kane too. He said, so with all this talent, who is going to be our one, our two, and our three? Sorry for the paragraph, and I hope all is well, and have a great day. I'll let you take this one, Coach. Uh, I'm um, going to stick to just the receiver position because in my mind, still the number one option is uh, Andrews. But as far as the receiver position – I think number one is going to be Hollywood. Number two is going to be Sammy. Number three is going to be Bateman. Okay. And that reason I say that because I think Sammy has the intangibles to to be a bigger slot dude. And if uh, if they slide a um, linebacker out there, he can work him. If they slide a corner that's maybe not so big, he can you know do things. You know he creates mismatches if you put Sammy in the slot. Whereas mm-hmm. if you put a smaller guy in there, they can just stick like a uh, a, a slot corner and he can cover him. But if you put Sam in there with that bigger, not tight end body, but he's just a bigger receiver, he can mm-hmm. he can do different things. Because so Sam can get in and out of breaks. And even though that clip, what, last week when that him and Bateman ran the same route, didn't show it? Oh, yeah. It's practice. It's practice. <laughs> and Sammy's an older, off-injured guy. So let him. Take let, it he, he knows his body. He knows his body. Mm-hmm. I do like the energy surrounding the team, though. Yeah. This, is, this is, and I don't know where I said it before, uh, but we have probably the most complete roster we've had in a while, as far as from from top to bottom. Yeah, you won't have like a well Lamar, but like the super superstar. We have Lamar, but we don't have. We got a lot of above average guys in role spots. If that makes um, sense. Yeah, I think. Um... Yeah, the big, biggest questions I think is, and I, I think I still think they're gonna sign a veteran edge guy. Mm-hmm. But um, besides that, no, I mean, maybe depth behind the starters on the interior defensive line, like because yeah. there's Calais, Brandon Williams, um, and BK. Wolf, but that you got Matt BK. But after that, mm-hmm. so you got a lot to get through. But uh, yeah, I, I, they they looking nice right now, man. I think you throw McPhee into that to that depth too. Oh yeah, because he yeah he he played inside and outside. Mm-hmm. Next question came from my guy Sahaj. He said, "Engraven, hope all is well with you and the family. I uh, hope you're staying safe. 
I also like to say that you're extremely underrated as a YouTuber. But anyways, appreciate it. He said, do you think that having Bowser play Patrick Queen's position, middle linebacker, and having Patrick Queen play Bowser's position, outside linebacker and edge, would be a good idea? No. Uh, I love Patrick Queen and all, but he was probably the worst middle linebacker in coverage last year. But he's great at blitzing, and Bowser's pretty good in coverage, as we all saw last year. Uh, I don't think Bowser is bad at pass rushing, but if he can cover better than someone whose job is covering, then why not just let him play the position? Also, like I said before, Queen is good at blitzing, so I might work. So it might work. Who knows? Just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Um, no, I no, I think Queen needs to stay just where he is. Uh, one of the biggest reasons um, I say that I know he struggled in pass coverage last year, but something that we got to remember is that last year they didn't have a proper off season, and he was a rookie. And he, he started off hot toward the end of the season. He sort of s slowed down a bit, but he didn't have an off season. So let's, I, I don't think it's fair. I don't think we can properly judge the rookies from last year uh, because they didn't have the entire body of work in June and July that they're supposed to and August as well. So let's see how he does this year, next year and whatnot and see the progression um, before we start trying to make him move position. Well, <laughs> how you feel, Coach? Well, uh, Bowser's an outside linebacker. Queen's an inside linebacker. And the coverage from those positions are completely different. The only coverage that Bowser's going to have is maybe a back in the flats or some kind of flat zone drop. He's not going to be covering anybody man-to-man. -man. At Mike, you got to recover the backs, tight ends, man-to-man -man zone, you basically, you got to have good hips to to do all that. And yeah, did he struggle in some time? Yeah. But that's, like you said, it's because of the the um, preparation. Yeah. He wasn't the only one. Malik struggled too because of preparation. J I mean, J.K. struggled because of preparation. They, did, they didn't have time yeah. to get used to the, the NFL, the speed of the NFL, the, yeah. the, the, the routine. They, they all had to do it on the fly. Right. And playing middle linebacker is one of the hardest positions in the NFL to play because you got so much responsibility. You got to run fit every play. You got to gap. Well, you got to gap and run fit the same thing. You got that every play. And not, not um, God forbid it's play action because you got to make sure that run fits there. Then you got to get in your drop. Or if it's man, you got your run fit. And, oh, it's man. I got to go find my man. It's what's one of the hardest positions in the NFL to play. Playing running back is probably one of the easier ones. Uh, other than pass pro, you know, coming in as a rookie. So I don't think they should change positions because what the drops that Bowser have to do, the coverage Bowser have to do, is a lot different than what um, Queen has to do in the middle. It's two totally different positions, even though both of them say linebacker. You know